Today is the move from opportunity into reality. We're getting the first soil carbon credits issued under the Australian Emissions Reduction Fund. It's not only a first for Australia, this is a first, this is actually an international first in that these count towards our Paris emissions reduction targets. The starting point of all soil carbon projects is measurement. So the crew's out here taking the soil cores. So we take the cores down to a metre depth, essentially mapping out the underground soil resource. Take the samples, send them off to the lab for analysis, measure the soil organic carbon content. We did our baseline sampling around in 2016. The baseline sets the amount of organic carbon that's on the farm. Each successive round you measure, that's what we compare in terms of the increase of soil organic carbon against the baseline. Farmers recognise that high levels of soil organic carbon means high levels of productivity. By participating in a soil organic carbon project, we're enabling a pathway for farmers to build soil organic carbon on their own farm, thereby improving productivity. We handle all the paperwork on the soil carbon credits, do all the calculations, manage the soil measurement, all of that work. And the soil key is, you know, the great thing about the soil key is it's about planting your own crops to grow more fodder uh, on farm of, of, of mixed species. The soil key renovator is a seeding machine for planting annual crops into pasture that fill the feed gaps for the summer and the winter growth. The method of fluffing up the seed bed while the rotating blades creates a green manure crop and aeration that has got a continuous feed source coming to the plants for six or seven weeks. Then the plant's self-sustainable and takes over from there. It's my favourite in terms of all the species that's planted. It's the uh, tillage radish because it helps, I think, visualise exactly what's going on and it's that root system that's just pumping that organic matter down into the soil. It's like a biological jackhammer. So then you've got the stock, you know, sort of grazing that off and this becomes the fodder. And that's all remaining, decomposing, you know, forming that basis for soil organic you know, uh, carbon, food source for biology, improved rainfall pathways and improved rainfall storage. It's just you know, best, best plant that you've got in your mix. Yep. Yeah, it's been um, a real eye open to us what's happening down deeper. We've been mainly looking around that sort of 150, 200 millimetres, yet here we are in, in increasing carbon a metre down and getting worms and, and plant roots down a metre and coming out the bottom of our sample, where prior to running the soil key method, uh, we were lucky to get roots down any more than 150 millimetres. Uh, this is a pea plant that we planted here three and a half weeks ago. It is really doing a great job at fixing nitrogen nodulation on its root system at the moment. That is the main driver for putting carbon into our soils by fixing that nitrogen with the legumes. So you need the nitrogen to grow to make the carbon? Yes. But you're growing the nitrogen in the paddock itself? Yes. So not adding any nitrogen to the system? No, no added whatsoever. And then livestock graze it off, and yep. then all, all, all that root matter goes into the soil organic matter. Yep. And, and any nitrogen stored in that root mat is energy for that soil to produce more carbon and convert more stubble and everything else that's in the soil into that carbon source for you. As a carbon project developer, I visit a lot of farms around Australia. And there was something immediately you know, different and special about you know, visiting the Olsen's uh, place here. And there's that mix of species. And you could actually feel that sponginess as you walked across each, each paddock. You know, I learned more about soils you know, in the, sort of the time I've spent with Niels and actually seeing in, in life as to what healthy soils mean. And you can actually see that structure. You can almost actually smell that quality of soil. And the exciting thing for us as a carbon project developers is every soil carbon credit that, we, you know, that comes off this project is an independent verification of the overall farming system, which is soil carbon equals agricultural productivity. We measured 11.2 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent between our baseline sampling round and our first sampling round, which is almost equivalent to growing a forest. But we're not taking land out of production, we're, we're enhancing that agricultural production. And the significance is the replicability across all different grazing, cattle grazing and dairy operations throughout Australia. We believe the Soil Key AgriProof system can deliver 15 carbon credits per hectare. So on a farm like the Olsen's farm here, is that equates to something like 1,500 soil carbon credits per annum. 
or $15,000 of additional revenue to the farm over and above the improved productivity. And if we mainstream this as an approach to agriculture, in terms of greenhouse gas reductions, we are talking in the millions, even hundreds of millions of tonnes of reductions in Australia alone with worldwide potential and application. Tremendously exciting, both from the agriculture and the emissions reduction perspective.